Over 175 armed state troopers and forest rangers went back into the dense Adirondack woodland this morning, slowly now closing in a circle with their bloodhounds in the area where Robert Garrow was last seen. The object is to take Robert Garrow alive. He's wanted for questioning in a second stabbing death, that of a Boston area camper found stabbed to death near a tree 23 miles from this campsite. His companion, a co-ed from Illinois, is still missing. Doug Myers for CBS News near Wells, New York. We had about uh, 35 state police officers here, uh, approximately 10 men from the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. The Conservation Department is here. We've utilized the state police helicopter. We've had the bloodhounds here from Malone. And uh, we're trying to secure the area as tight as possible at this present time. We have search details out, checking wood roads, etc. And we want to uh, say positively yes or no, if we can, that the suspect or his vehicle is in this present area before we're going to relieve any of the, of the roadblocks at present. I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, this is strikingly similar to what happened a couple of weeks ago over in Weavertown. Well, it's somewhat similar in area, wooded areas, etc. And there's uh, campers involved, and uh, a slaying is somewhat similar. Uh, with the woods up here, and instructed them to uh, secure each other. He, knows he his way is an expert woodsman. They chased him into the woods, but you figure he could have gotten well, out easily. Well, at the time, Union reporter told me that uh, he uh, saw the picture of the kid that, you know, of him being wanted for, so being out on the highway and everything. I think he got a ride or somehow or another, he got, just got out. Mightn't he uh, uh, get caught out there? They know what he was wearing. They know what he looks like. Uh, is there anything that would have made Bob do something like this? Any any idea, any thoughts? Just something snapped yeah, or I some think hatred? He did because since then, I've been hearing the odds and ends that he is not the same as he was. And he was doing so well before, after he got out of prison. I thought he was doing excellent. I used to go see him. Telephone, Teresa. Yeah. Telephone. Telephone. Yeah. He was doing quite well. And uh, I just don't know. I, something is, something, this had to be this. That, that's my own thing. It had to be this. It's my opinion. I've, I've always liked Bob because Bob and I always got along so good. He and I used to stick up for each other, stand up for each other in school. When you were kids? When you were kids. Even though he wasn't living at home, I used to see him in school, and I knew he was my brother, and that was that. But I didn't know, you know, too much about him just being brother and sister, you know. Any thoughts on uh, whether the state police could possibly get a man who knows the woods as well as Bob to catch him in there, if he is in there? It's on his situation right now. Well, very hard time for you, I know It is that. a very hard time for me at this time because I'm the mother of nine children. Grandmother is six, and they all are coming home asking me what really is wrong with their uncle. And it's hard for me to tell because I, well, I haven't talked to Bob since last October much, but it's kind of hard to know what made him actually want to do all these things. I do know that this thing with my mother, and she should have never had children, and it's kind of hard. I, it's kind of confusing for me at times. I just wish I could see him and talk to him. I think I, it would be a great help. Are you hoping he'll turn himself in? Or? I do so very much, but I'm in great doubt that Bob will turn himself in. It would have to be something to spur the second moment before he gave it a second thought. Because, well, I guess we all do that in second thought. Sometimes we do change our minds. This morning, we're starting out a, a uh, search detail here of 40 men on foot. They will start from the road that you're standing on now, just up uh, about a quarter, half a mile here to where the dogs went in earlier, and they will sweep on either side of Rob Creek and Fly Creek, continuing on up for a point approximately two miles. While they're traveling up here, we'll have a, what we call a floating center of men who back and forth between the two search details on the creeks, using the creeks as their perimeters. 
and they will, when they reach a point when they can no longer practically flop over the middles, we will mark that point, continue on up the creek for a point two miles above, which is marked by a camp. Then the details, when hitting that point, will travel towards each other into the middle, come back down towards the road to the point that they marked, in the meantime, covering the entire area, this two-mile area, one uh, search uh, sweep. When they hit that point, then they'll move back across the creeks and come back down to the road, sweeping in approximately, uh, I would say, about a three-mile area, or a two-and-a-half-mile area. That's what's going on right now. All through the night, they stood watch. Troopers and sheriff's deputies, armed with rifles and shotguns, they're manning the dozen or so roadblocks here in the speculator area, searching for 38-year-old Robert Garrow. He's wanted in connection with the stabbing death Sunday of 18-year-old Philip Dembrowski of Schenectady. The object is to take Robert Garrow alive. He's also wanted in connection with the stabbing death of a Massachusetts camper found not 20 miles from this roadblock three weeks ago. His 23-year-old co-ed companion is still missing. Over 175 state troopers, forest rangers, backed by helicopters, spent their fifth day searching this densely wooded Adirondack area for Robert Garrow. And now a state police spokesman says Garrow is leading us in circles. He's playing games, and it's only a matter of time before he runs into us. Doug Myers for CBS News near Wells, New York. If you noted before, we were on the other side of this creek, uh, up on Old E.B., and we were tight there. So he slipped this way on us, but now we're tight here, but we still have our perimeters up. Major, um, Major, what, what do you think uh, the chances are, since the cordon is a lot tighter than it has been before, what do you think the chances are of uh, perhaps making the capture or making a, a final end to this manhunt today? Well, hopefully we, we, we shall, yes. Every day we... Uh, face that same problem, and every day we're optimistic that we're going to catch him. Betty, what happened this afternoon? Uh, this evening. Uh, the car came in, and we have no attendant tonight. He's out sick. And I told him that he wanted gas. And I said, if you want gas, you'll have to pump it. He says, you have no gas? I says, yes, I have gas. He says, uh, oh, the pumps are closed? I said, no. I said, the pumps are open, we have gas, and you can get it if you pump it. But he was very reticent about getting out of the car. And finally, he decided, I guess he was going to get it because he wouldn't have gotten it anywhere else. And he got out, and he came over, he says, I've never done this before. And I said, well, I'll tell you what to do. But he... Uh, he says, here, let me give you the $5 bill. He'll pay you first. He says, I want $5. And he comes running over with his hand out straight uh, to throwing the money at me. And uh, he wouldn't come up close. I had to step outside to get it. And uh, then he just stopped and just kind of stared at me for a minute. What did the man look like? Just like the pictures of him. He had uh, balding, brown hair, blue eyes. Uh, he had glasses, but with a gold rim. Uh... Same shape, face, lips. Everything seemed to jive. The car that was stolen in Speculator was a white Pontiac uh, Tempest and with Ohio plates. Did that fit the description? Yes. I hadn't been able to place the make of the car until I mentioned it. We just finished interviewing witnesses uh, to this crime. And as a result of the interview of witnesses, we came up with a positive identification that I'll be glad to distribute to you, uh, to be used, we hope, in an aid to apprehending this subject. At this, at this point? That's right. Thank you. Thanks, Major. He has a fetish for uh, hats and for robes, is that right? He wears hats. He wears hats. Most all the time.
kind of tough to hold on to your head up in there. I was shot. I was shot by Robert Garrow, a quote unquote certified paralyzed individual, certified by the doctors of the Department of Correction of the Albany Medical Center. This guy was paralyzed. How did he shoot me? How did he lift himself up? Why? Nobody could answer me. The bullet went in, went right to my body, hit the tip of my pelvic bone, turned, went straight up. Now mind you, I was 20 feet from Robert Garrow. So basically, I was hit point blank. And the only reason he did not kill me or did not hurt me worse is because he didn't have his glasses on. He was shooting at a moving orange thing. And he shot, he shot and shot. Well, I'm laying there in bed and I'm on TV. My telephone, I was, had a telephone in my room, but I was not allowed to talk to anybody. Everything had to be screened. The state police were there. If a phone call came in, I was not allowed to talk to anyone. I'm laying there and I'm watching on TV, I'm sitting there. You know, I'm hurting and I'm worried about my parents. They're coming in from Buffalo, Batavia, Buffalo, wherever. You know, they're seven hours away. My father's scared to death. Well, I'm laying there in bed. And a map of New York State comes up. The news was up. A map of New York State. There's X's where Garrow allegedly killed all of these individuals. Three of the confirmed. All the others we don't really didn't know. And we, maybe we still don't know. I don't know. One brings to mind there was an X in Syracuse, New York and a name, Alicia Houck. Okay, 16-year-old girl who he killed and he buried in a cemetery. Phone rings. State trooper is talking to this person. Officer Arena is not allowed to speak to anybody. I'll leave him a message. And that's all I can do for you, ma'am. He goes, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am, no. He's going, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, back and forth. Okay, ma'am hangs up the phone. He goes, that was Marilyn Houck. She said, thank you for Syracuse. Alicia Houck. Mm -hmm. It was bad. One time, if I could have broke a rule, I would have. Didn't do it. Couldn't do it, because they wouldn't let me. To this day, I wish I could talk to somebody in that Houck family. That bothered me the most. I get goosebumps, I still got goosebumps. Why did you kill people? That's a question that I can't answer, or a question that anybody can't answer, because everyone at a certain time, when you do do something, you're under a tremendous amount of pressure. As for myself, I didn't realize it at the time. I couldn't, that's a question I can't answer.